What's up guys? I just found a giant puff ball. I'm going to show you all how to uh, prepare it. And then uh, later on I'll show you how to cook it. Stay tuned. So here's that giant puff ball. It's got a little bit of brown around the edges where it was sitting on the ground. Uh, what you want to do is cut that off. And that little black spot in the middle, you can cut around it. And that black spot was kind of through there. It looked like some type of bug or something may have went through. Cut it out. And then you can cut this little brown stuff out right here. And then here's one that has quite a bit of brown. It has that thing. I'll just cut all that out. And then here's the rest of the puffball I have right now. You can tell like on the bottom of it is where it was sitting on the ground. I guess this might be a... Uh, Kind of like a root system type type deal. Um, that's kind of what I heard. Well, it was probably just a bug trail. It might have just been a bug trail. Like a worm or something. You know, actually, there was a worm under this thing whenever I picked it up. So, pretty good theory, maybe. But anyway, um, this thing's rather large. Rather large. And look, <laughs> that's my hand for scale there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to continue cutting this open, um, laying out paper towels, trying to spread it out on these paper towels. I mean, these things are like, these things here make good pancakes. I mean, you know, that's my hand. It's as big as my hand, you know, as far as the length goes. Well, width goes. Length, it's uh, even bigger than that, so. Yeah, these things are rather large, man. That's a pretty good find. All right, so here's the outer edge of the mushroom, uh, the puffball. It reminds you of like a uh, the membrane on an egg. You can simply take that and just kind of peel it right off, just like you can an egg. And that's what you'll want to do. I guess some people don't peel these off, but I prefer to. <clears throat> the bottom of this mushroom will end up having to cut off. That's where it was sitting on the ground. And we'll also cut up through the middle and cut all that funk out. But I've been cutting these up in strips. And uh, I find that it's going to be easier to cook that way. Because this is an awfully big mushroom. I mean, hell, I can make pizzas out of this almost. I, well, I definitely could make pizzas out of this. Uh, you know, smaller ones. But I think I have a pretty big hand, but... I'm not a basketball player or anything. I'll roll this thing over. So that's what the back side of it looks like. This is all, it all feels like membrane on a egg. I'm get more of this off this way. But it'll look pretty well solid white underneath you don't want to eat anything that's yellow or any other color other than white it's a little bit more difficult to do this on camera it's a lot easier to do it without the camera you're able to use two hands a good piece. There we go, maybe. And I'll likely cut all this bottom off, just, you know, where it's pocketed and stuff when I cut <clears throat> when I cut into it I'll uh, see more what's going on on the bottom side all right I'll get the rest of this thing peeled and I'll get back all right any of the residual cut off pieces that I did not want to keep I like to take and just throw outside in the yard um, you know what that's going to do is allow the spores to uh, you know travel into the soil, uh, create mycelium, and potentially uh, grow some more puffballs next year. 
and maybe even later on this year. Uh, I don't know really how quickly they uh, germinate. So, Y'all might think this is crazy, but, uh, you know, I just picked these mushrooms a little bit ago and, um, you know, cut them up, put them in this bowl. What I like to do to kind of preserve them to the end of the day, because puffballs typically don't last that long, I'll take them back outside after I cut them up. Just like that. Leave them out here for about a minute or so and then put the lid back on. And they'll stay like that for about the rest of the day.